This is one of the reasons why I want to sort the dust extraction system out again. Uh, the existing cyclone, I've obviously been too rough with it when I put it back in place and cracked it. The other reason is that I uh, basically made it, de I designed it so it was inaccessible. Um, not a great move. And it would be nice to be able to free this space up to be able to use it inside of the um, workshop instead of having a cyclone in here. Just a little bit full. Maybe I should have emptied this a little bit earlier. So what we're going to do about the dust extraction. Originally we had the cyclone with a 40 millimeter pipe underneath it or a 50 millimeter pipe underneath it and then going into a drum the um, vac itself lived outside in a teeny little box that was at the bottom of that pipe and uh, that pipe is just basically some stove conduit that comes in through here and it had the uh, shop vac outside so to keep the noise outside and uh, the dust extraction or the dust cyclone inside the machinery was connected via this 40 mil with a 3D printed um, blast gate on it and it was going to go, it had a one port at that end for the drill press, one port at this in for just general purpose and desktop stuff, one port at this end for if I was building another bench here and then you can see where that black plastic sticking out, it was the end cap. This is originally going to be a downpipe to a ground floor vacuum cleaner. The idea being that you could just sweep stuff along the floor and into this vac and it would suck it up. That never got done. That port never gets used because I don't have anything here other than junk. And this one got used all of the time. And this one uh, for the drill press was good, but it was too thin. And what happened was when I started using this one for... The thickness player, the thickness player was too much for it, and the 40 mil pipe just clogged up, and it kept on clogging up round about here somewhere, uh, which is actually the reason why the end pipes off is because I ended up using a, a large piece of trim to just empty the pipe, and that kind of sealed the end of the deal. After that point, if the planer couldn't connect to it, then the the use of the the top surface was very very limited. The cyclone was taking a lot of space, and as I, um, I said, I put it in a stupid place, so it was almost impossible to empty it without dismantling most of the cupboard at the same time. And as I've just discovered, uh, the the actual cyclone itself is cracked, so that's out the window. So what am I going to do instead? I'm taking this stuff out, and what I'm thinking about doing is um, I really like the solution, the whispering box that uh, Dennis had hooked on wood. Um, made and I really like the look of the record power vac that he has so I think I'm going to get the record power vac I'm going to pop it outside um, and have the exit come back into the shop um, through a whispering box so that we keep the, the heat from the vac coming in, back into the room and this will be more important in winter where the dust extraction is most important because I can't just open the doors and it should mean that the, the room's a little bit more thermally protected. It might mean that I move that, but it all depends on whether or not, uh, or how I actually bring the pipework to the benches. So here we've got the pipework right next to the bench, and that's quite good for just jamming stuff behind it, but it's not great for the tidiness at the back of the bench. And I'm thinking is maybe bring the pipe along that top uh, trim piece there, in where you see the shadow gap there's the leds just above that so i might bring a, the pipe from that hole in the wall there along and then have drops so have a drop down here uh, for the bench maybe have a drop down in the corner there for the drill press or whatever's there and then have another drop at this end down to round about here just as a sort of the next step 
This also allows us to be able to ship it, a ship a, a, a collection point, like instead of it being a drop here, it could go over the ceiling and come to the ceiling and have an entry point of the ceiling. So you could just plug in a, a, an exhaust pipe at this point and then that would hook up to this side. So I'm going with 63 mil, I think. I think 100 will be too too big for the space. Um, and it's gonna go for the uh, the dual motor um, vac, just like Dennis has, because it looked really, really impressive. Um, and that should live in a uh, bespoke built cabinet outside. So uh, that's another project to do. But I kind of think that I'm gonna get the shop pack first and then I can use it inside of the shop to actually build the enclosure for it. So that's kind of the plan, but we're just in dismantle mode at the moment and taking all of the stuff out. And as it is, I also need to take the top of this work surface off and the backboard off it and all that sort of stuff. So it's a proper dismantle and reassessment of how the workshop uh, actually functions. So I've done a bit of work on the workbench and um, it is a part of the whole general re-evaluating everything and um, restructuring the space to be able to fit the dust extractor system into it. Um, and obviously attention has turned to the workbench. When we built the workbench it was built of construction number. Um, and we knew it wasn't square, we knew it wasn't particularly flat, but it was basically designed to carry the load of the initial work to get the workshop over and running and other constructional problems or um, um, projects, sorry. So uh, then a little bit earlier on, I took the top off the workbench and flattened the tops through the thickness planer and got the most of the uh, bow out of them. But having put them back together, um, while it might look okay, I've realized that part of the problem isn't just the top. Um, the workbench itself sits flat on the floor, so it's it's you know it's stable. It, the feet don't rock at all or anything like that. But what I've realised is when I made it, um, multiple errors were made in the process of making it. Um, one of them was the assumption of where I was making it; the floor was level, and it wasn't. But the other um, one of the other challenges or mistakes that were made was the legs. Uh, I I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, but there is so the you've got this um, support on the left hand side, and then the support on the right hand side going the opposite way. The other leg is identical, so I've effectively made two left legs or two right legs, whichever you way you look at it. And the other problem is is that this front leg and the back leg are actually quite significantly longer than the other two legs. And that is the reason why um, the the bench doesn't sit flat, is that fundamentally two of the legs out of the other uh, four are, are different lengths to each other. But I think that the, when the, constructing the bench, the reason why this was a case and what wasn't really picked up was uh, ineptitude on my part, but these front aprons, um, the the timber was quite bowed, 
and the back one is more bowed and twisted than the front one so I used the front one because that was the sort of space that I was probably going to be vicing against and such like so I wanted that straight but when I pulled it out of the wall um, to flatten the tops and such like I did realise how bowed the apron that's around the that's on the back there how bowed that one is and I think that when it was put together you tie the feet together no you tie the uh, feet to the subframe and then the subframe to the apron and I think putting the apron on has twisted the whole bench and it means that uh, the the two extra different lengths are actually making up for the twist in the bench so I'm in a little bit of quandary as to how to fix this obviously one of the first things is to do is to shorten the legs so that they're all exactly the same length and then see how much of a rock is on it but the fact that it's stable and those legs are longer kind of says that there's more subframe work to be done as well so I may accidentally be dismantling the entire thing to try and sort out that um, problem pretty much for no sort of like real benefits other than getting the, the surface flat the other alternative is basically ignoring that and putting a new top surface on re-leveling the top surface based on the existing frame um, but it would be using something like two layers of MDF uh, to create the stability um, and the rigidity to be able to uh, re-level everything off the subframe so it wouldn't be um, super drilled in and screwed in like this one is it would be um, leveled off that.